Earwigs, also known as pincers, are small creatures that are surrounded by terrifying stories and some frightening legends, and which people are usually afraid of and disgusted by. Are these insects truly frightening and should we be afraid? Let's investigate. I need a model, and for this purpose, um, where are we going? To the meadow, obviously. I'm going to look for earwigs. This is something new. And here is my black arrow. But it's bright. And here we are, we are in the meadow. There are such nice meadows here, as you can see. The worst part is I have no certainty or idea that I'll find such appeal. We're going on a whim. The worst part is that today I got an RCB alert, and as you can see, you can't see. But you can see over there. There are such clouds over there, that if it starts to pour, it will wash us all away here. Well, let's start with the nomenclature, that is the name, earwigs. It turns out that the whole order to which these strange crawling creatures with pincers on their back belong is not called earwigs at all. These are forficula or pincers, so for the purposes of further education in this film, I will say forficula. As for the name earwigs, well, it's obvious where it came from, isn't it? It's simple. Forficula is an order of insects with approximately 2,000 species, making it a relatively small order. There are many species of rodents, including mice, hamsters and others. Can you believe it? Despite the order not being very diverse, nearly everyone is familiar with the common earwig, also known as forficula. Uh, fortunately, from my experience, I think I know how to find such a forficula relatively easily, because they often hang out on such vertical parts of higher plant parts. Well, let's see, maybe we can find something interesting, and if not, well, it's tough. Well, although I haven't found the earwig yet, but I found a wonderful tiny jumper. I don't even know what species it is, but just look at how funny this little guy is. The swollen creature is likely a pregnant female and is truly beautiful. Just look at it. It just jumped. Done, I'm looking, I'm looking, but there's no bark to be found. I found a potential nest, but it was empty. We continue our search. Attention, fun fact, I found, listen, a sleeping butterfly. Uh, since this is a diurnal butterfly, which flies during the day, well, it also has to somehow regenerate its energy. And it's just chilling now, it doesn't fly away. These little guys fly very fast, and it uh, well, just sits and does nothing. Listen, bingo, we got it. There was that sleeping butterfly, and right here next to it, but now let's do it so that it doesn't run away. I'm not sure if it will focus in the center of the frame for you now. Exactly as I said at the beginning, on the higher parts of the plant, a female earwig is sitting normally. However, as I just walked past her, you can see, she already has her pincers spread out. She is already ready to defend herself. Great, we found an earwig. It's there, I finally found what I really wanted to show you. What do you see here? These are leaves, right? Uh, nothing groundbreaking, but these leaves are, as you can see, stuck together with something like a thread, something like a spider would be here. And there's also a hiding place inside. And now, if I were to ask you who this hiding place belongs to, well, I assume that most of the answers would be either that it's a spider or I don't know. And it turns out that in such hiding places, which are indeed white, and this is seriously totally spiderweb, earwigs live. And in this nest lived an earwig. How do I know? Because it fell out as soon as I started digging around it. And by the way, I caught this earwig and I will show you. However, the main lesson that comes from this is that a white nest does not always mean that a spider lives inside. Oh, this is something, and I really wanted to show you this because I was also looking for it. You can easily locate an earwig by this. They live in such funny burrows. Let's establish a few basic facts about earwigs. Firstly, earwigs are insects, meaning they have all the typical insect features. They have six legs, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Everything checks out. Uh, at the end of the abdomen are pincers, and these pincers are actually transformed abdominal appendages. And in this case, they serve them either for defense or for catching prey, or for males to hold the female during copulation. So they have various uses. Yes, and these are the scary pincers that earwigs have at the end of the abdomen. Can earwigs do any harm to humans? Absolutely not. They won't pinch us with those pincers. They might try to defend themselves, but they don't have enough strength to pierce human skin. Absolutely not. Maybe the biggest beetle in the world right now could have such strength to try. I'll show you his picture soon. He's around 2.2 inches tall. Interestingly, if I had recorded this film 20 years ago in 2003, I wouldn't have said that this beetle is the biggest in the world, but that this beetle is the biggest in the world. 
He was about 3.1 inches, but in 2004 he was declared extinct and only lived on the island of St. Helena. And now there are theories that uh, rodents and other creatures that feed on beetles have exterminated this beetle there, right? So yeah, such a story, such a curiosity. Earwigs can't harm us, they are not venomous, they are not poisonous, but if we annoy such an earwig, it will first try to defend itself with its pincers. And secondly, earwigs secrete a specific smelling substance. This defensive substance won't harm us, even if we ate the earwig. I don't know who would try. Well, nothing would happen, it would just taste bad. Another issue related to earwigs is, of course, myths and stories about them. As if earwigs during our sleep would enter through our ear, chew through the eardrum, and then go into the brain and lay eggs there. While earwigs do lay eggs, not all species do. Some earwigs, such as viviparous earwigs, give birth to live young. So yes, they do lay eggs, but not in the human brain. They don't chew through the membrane here in the ear. This is completely made up. So don't believe it. If grandma scares you that earwigs enter through the ear into the brain, grandma is lying. I'm not sure where these superstitions originated or in which countries they exist, but I know they are present in Poland. It's important to debunk them. No, that doesn't happen. Earwigs don't go into ears. As for laying eggs... Yes, earwigs are mostly oviparous, and what's more, earwigs are brilliant parents. That is, if the female lays eggs, most often in the soil, she, you know, digs a burrow, lays these eggs, then the female will take care of these eggs. What does it mean to take care? It means that she, for example, will lick them to prevent any mold from getting to them. If the nymphs hatch, which are tiny earwigs but still without any pincers, that's another interesting fact. If the nymphs hatch, the mother still takes care of them, so earwigs are generally fantastic parents. And another thing, which maybe not many people know, but earwigs can fly. Yes, they are winged insects, even though, well, look at this earwig, right? Well, it's basically a walking sausage with pincers on its back, nothing special. So someone will ask right away, if it can fly, where are its wings? Well, it turns out that earwigs do indeed have wings. And not just that they have wings, they have huge wings compared to the size of their bodies. And the best part is that they have to fold these wings several times, using their pincers to help, so they can hide them under the two brown plates on their abdomen. Check it out, these are the earwig's wing covers, and underneath them are the flight wings, which are transparent and which they unfold to fly. Another thing is that earwigs fly quite rarely, and it's rare to observe this process at all, but how they can unfold and then fold these wings, well, I think that's amazing and phenomenal. We know earwigs as essentially harmless creatures, aside from those myths that wander around, live, they exist, but somehow they don't have a big impact on our lives. And that's because our earwigs are not parasites, right? They are, it's also interesting that they are essentially both beneficial and at the same time sometimes not beneficial. Earwigs are omnivorous. They can eat both aphids, which is beneficial, and plants, which is not ideal. They generally feed on practically everything. In South America, two earwig families are parasites, unlike other regions where the situation differs. Parasites of mammals, they typically live on rodents and other mammalian hosts. So it's not that there are such earwigs all over the world as we know them, but there can be very strange earwigs in the world, which can make life difficult for mammals, for example, being their parasites. And these earwigs, by the way, are also viviparous. They look strange and don't completely resemble our earwigs. It's an insect that's hard to identify. Resembling a silverfish, a dragonfly larva, or something in between, these creatures are actually earwigs. In conclusion, should we be afraid of earwigs? No. Do we have to like them? No. Uh, we can dislike earwigs and treat them poorly, but in most cases they are actually our beneficial allies. Especially since they won't do anything to us. Sometimes thanks to them we can get rid of unwanted tenants from plants, for example aphids, for example other smaller insects. So it seems to me that it's worth keeping earwigs in our environment. And they are, you know, cool dudes, basically neutrals, let's call it, like Switzerland. At the end, of course, let me know if you liked the movie and if I at least slightly dispelled your doubts about these earwigs. So I'm counting on you and see you in the next video. Bye! Oh, and here we have, well, we have to call it by its name, some kind of orgy. Did you know how many of them are here? And they are just having fun with each other. Okay.